Okay, just so you know, this meeting is being recorded, and if you are recording it, please give us notification of that. Dr. Barry. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the purposes of uh, interpreters. Uh, we've been asked when speaking uh, individually or at the podium to please take off your mask so that uh, the deputy hearing community can actually hear us. Thank you. Okay, first up on the agenda, we're going to be Bill Trapuzzi, Mr. Chairman. Okay, first up on the agenda, we're going to be Bill Trapuzzi, Mr. Chairman. Okay, first up on the agenda, we're going to be Bill Trapuzzi, Mr. Chairman. Okay, first up on the agenda, we're going to be Bill Trapuzzi, Mr. Chairman. Okay, first up on the agenda, we're going to be Bill Trapuzzi, Mr. Chairman. Seeing the objections, corrections, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of October 14th, 2021 open session meeting. So, seconded. All those in favor, are we, can we still move on? What's your mind right now? Uh, yes, we still move on. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Mrs. Gallagher? Yes. Mr. Stern? Yes. Mr. Shady? Yes. And Mr. Savas? Yes. Next up is our warrants. I reviewed and approved the following warrants in which them to be put into public record. October 21st, 876,897 dollars Also October 21st, um, payroll one million forty-six thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars and sixty-two cents. Thank you very much. Yeah. Number three on the agenda is the student representative updates. Malia Zoe, do we have you guys? Yeah, we're on here. Uh, okay, so this week we want to do more of like a Halloween kind of like fun update because we've done a lot of. Hey, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Carrie, can we get that turned up a little bit? Look, can we turn it up? Is it Maria, can you turn your mic up? I don't know if I can. Uh, I don't yeah. think I have it. Yeah, no, we don't have that on Chromebooks, but. It, you're good now. Is it okay? I can just, I'll try and talk louder. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with the LGM. Uh, they're celebrating Halloween several year, several ways this year. Uh, students and staff can wear costumes tomorrow, which is Friday the 29th. Classrooms are doing fun curriculum activities that are aligned with the st with standards, but with a Halloween twist, um, such as pumpkin math, estimation, weighing, measuring, and decorating for um, grades K through three. Uh, many Halloween fall stories are being read aloud with prompts and other activities for writing. Science lessons on Halloween topics such as learning about bats and the human skeleton are also being taught. And Zoe's going to go to the Yale. Um, so at the Yale, they've had many Halloween themed activities too. Um, they've done science experiments with a spooky lens, writing activities with the Halloween theme, as well as many math and readings around Halloween. This Friday, so tomorrow, they're going to wear costumes, faculty and staff and students. Um, and on Friday evening, they have their Hey PTO Trunk or Treat event from 6 to 7.35. And they usually do a so it should be really fun. And they'll have the, they're going to be participating in the Chartley Green Parade, also through the PTO. And overall, students are really excited for the holiday with everything that they've been doing these past few weeks. I'm going to move right into the high school. Um, high school, it's ready for the big competition between the departments of the departments dressing up and the students voting on which department wins. Ever since my freshman year, the English department has won every year. So the history department has actually been trying to bribe the kids to try to vote for them this year. <laughs> Um, they even put up a sign already saying vote for history department. So everyone's super excited to see what they're going to do. But it seems as though that the art department might even have a running this year. They have some pretty good ideas. So we're pretty excited to see how that goes. But we'll tell us a little bit more about what the students are doing. Yeah. Um, keep the history department in your thoughts and prayers. They've been fighting for a long time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, so the students are going to be doing a kind of a similar thing with the costume contest. Um, they're going to be basically, I think what we're doing this year, like Zoe can correct me, but we're kind of having a similar thing to the teachers where we have a Google, a Google form with pictures of the students who are running for the costume contest and like what they're dressed as. So 
basically everyone will be able to vote on their favorite costume regardless of like whether they know the person or if they've even seen them that day so it should be fun and i think i don't know what the reward is for that is it just like for fun so we can do <laughs> Um, I think it's usually like a Duncan gift card or something, something of that sort. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like a Duncan or a home plate gift card, but either way, <laughs> it's going to be fun. So I think that's pretty much it for the high school. I think we do the costume contest and, you know, everyone dresses up. It's fun. You know, I, I've missed it. So I think it'll be fun, but. Yeah, definitely check out the Twitter pictures because it's definitely going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's it for us, though, if you guys are all, all set. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, okay, next in my discretion, I'm going to change the agenda tonight. I'm going to move number six uh, off to be order to right now. That's the Learning Teachers Association and Mass Policy. Miss Taylor, are you here? Miss Walker's going to be with me if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, all right. Thank you guys for providing us the opportunity to speak tonight. Since this was on the agenda for the 14th meeting, BNT and members felt left out of this important dialogue as we were still negotiating through our joint labor management committee over this change. If we had been consulted about the start date, we would have communicated our concerns more promptly. NTA members are present remotely, but were not recognized to speak. Since many members of the JCS community one morning, we were not able to be present at the last meeting, but we communicated that we would be prepared to speak tonight at this meeting as we heard there were frustrations about the length of the negotiations and what the impact of this decision would be on working and learning conditions. We wanted to have an open and honest dialogue with you. The health and safety of our students and their families is a top priority of the Learning Teachers Association. NTA members have worked tirelessly to provide the best possible education while taking prudent scientifically supported and medically endorsed steps to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Since one risk mitigation will be removed, we needed to ensure that other mitigation strategies recommended by the CDC, the AAP, the Harvard School of Public Health, EEC, and DESE were in place. Uh, we worked with Leigh Wazat, our facilities director, regarding um, air quality and air exchange rates. In this process, we found that some of our systems were not functioning properly, but these issues have been addressed. We've added air purifiers to every room where pre-K students would be in. KN95 masks are available to any staff member. We've increased cleaning protocols as well. We are still working on creating outdoor learning spaces, clarifying testing requirements and protocols through the Board of Health and DESE, and other concerns with classroom management. We are anticipating that there may be unforeseen challenges as well that we'll continue to address through our JL events. I know you guys know we use that process since March or April, we started April 2020 with that process and it's been really um, beneficial for us. Um, as we were reviewing what mitigations need to be implemented, we met with the pre-K staff several times to understand their questions and, and get their answers. I know that there have been, like this topic has been discussed before, but myself as president of the association, I can't speak on those topics unless I'm able to meet with them. So that's what we were did. Um, and the pre-K staff felt they wanted to have their collective voices be heard. So Amy Warren, whoever is going to read that statement right now. To the Norton Stroke Committee, we, the staff of the Little Lancers Preschool Program, have concerns with the decision to change the masking policy for only the preschool students from a mandate to a masking optional. We have not been provided the opportunity to express those concerns in an open forum since the decision was made. So we want you to be aware of how this decision will impact the preschool environment students' social emotional well-being and their learning. This year, students are wearing masks and the entire district has been able to return to some sense of normalcy. Since the start of the school year, we have been grateful for the opportunity to return to best practices for our students. Having our students masked has allowed them to once again engage in enriching learning and cooperative activities. Students have enjoyed working, learning, and playing together while remaining safe. Unmasking students is a change to the working and learning environment. Masking has been one consistent mitigation that we have used in this district since the start of the 2021 school year. It has been supported by our six school nurses and district pediatrician. Since this mitigation strategy will be removed, we need to ensure that other mitigations are in place for the health and safety of our students. Following the guidelines put forth by the experts at CDC and AAP, this change will inhibit rather than promote what we know are the best teaching practices for students in preschool. 
To be clear, we do not want to physically distance our students, but, is, but it is our responsibility to keep all students safe in school, especially those who are at a higher risk. Our students cannot be vaccinated. This mitigation strategy, which will be an option for older students, will not be afforded to ours. This is why we feel so strongly about continuing masking for our students, a sentiment shared by our colleagues and other preschool programs in town. While the health of the community remains a prominent concern, the overall welfare of students must also be considered. We must ask what is best for all students. With the continued masking mandate, we will be able to keep a consistent educational experience for the students. When students turn five, they will be required to wear a mask again. This will be another change for students to manage. Also, we want to prevent more widespread contact tracing and quarantining as we know the requirements for testing and quarantining are different when students are wearing masks versus when they are not. We want our students in school every day. We consistently emphasize the importance of our students' social and emotional well-being. What impact will this change have on them? And why change what has been working so well for us to start this year? Thank you to Little Lancers Preschool Program staff and MTA Executive Board. What I, what I think is so special about Morton is the relationship still. And um, we understand that there is work to be done. And as always in the past, we hope this process will be open and honest. We truly value and take pride in the fact that we do have a great working relationship with the administration and school committee. And even though we disagree on this topic, we are committed to continue to bargain with you in good faith moving forward. There are so many exciting things that are happening here in Norton, and it's because and these things aren't able to happen in other districts, right? We've talked about that a lot. There's something about what we are able to do here that that has been amazing. Um, and we've we spent a lot of time do, uh, working on these things and building these positive relationships. And we want you to know that this that's not going away. Like that for us, we know that that's there, but we just wanted to have a chance to be able to get everybody together have our collective voices heard and, and and just that understanding that we didn't feel that we were able to comment about this last week or not last week I'm, i apologize on the 14th due to the state that um, our community was in at that time um so i apologize if it felt as though that was not the case for us this is i'm very passionate about how much i i i am proud to be a leader here in Norton and it is because of what we're able to do so I truly appreciate you guys having us on the agenda tonight and hearing us um and, and again we know that they're not everyone feels the same way and, and that's okay we just want to be able to have our voices heard so we appreciate that okay thank you for your comments we appreciate it Mr. Schneider you request a little for great statement as well Um, next slide for 40 North Wilson Street and Um I just want to kind of clarify a few points here. One, this isn't parents against teachers, this isn't parents against school committee, this isn't school committee against teachers. Um, <clears throat> I think you don't mind telling I've probably been educated by him with some teachers behind me. <laughs> I've graduated from one half. I know kind of how this community works. I know the amount of what the people and the people behind me put into what they're doing. Um, ultimately, though, I do want to clarify some points <laughs> because I do think it's important to, for the public to hear and make sure that it is on record. The North School Committee had an open forum on September 8, 2021. That was for any parent, uh, any student of any government student, uh, any taxpayer, citizen, teacher in the town wanted to come to. It was an open forum held to discuss what was going on with the masking in, in the North Public Schools. Uh, I know for a fact there was teachers there. I know the union president, Ms. Taylor, was also, was also there. I believe two teachers spoke at that meeting. Then again, on 9, uh, September 9, 2021, the similar group of teachers was present, again, uh, including the union president. They had been, their voices had never been silent. Um, and I do but truly believe the school community uh, gave the ample opportunity for all teachers and all taxpayer citizens of the town uh, ample opportunity to speak on this topic. At that meeting on 9-9, uh, uh, the school committee actually voted in favor to move the little Lancer's mask uh, from required or mandated to parental choice. Um, that masking policy had been delayed 
for reasons mostly known to the public. However, we have heard from Superintendent Baena and Chairman Savas uh, that they need to negotiate with the MTA. I want to make a very clear point. Hopkinton High School has just football. A few weeks ago, just voted three to two school parent violence to unmask their children uh, in the high school because they only need some vaccination rate. The uh, Hopkinton Teachers Association also, you know, breathed it, complained about it, whatever the case may be, put a statement coming forward. Basically, it's a, you know, same idea. They were allowed, they don't you know, think it's the right time, so on and so forth. Uh, what Hopkins the school committee and the Hopkins superintendent said is, this isn't your business. <laughs> and what I mean by that, I don't mean it in a condescending in the wrong way. It's an educational policy. <laughs> they didn't negotiate with their teachers union. You guys did it. Dr. Bayana did it. What has gone above and beyond for these teachers to let their voices be heard? Other districts have it. I completely agree with Ms. Taylor in terms of what Norton has. Norton has something that's very special because we have great teachers, we have great parents, we have great leaders in the community that make this community, you know, function and make these schools better than when I was there, which is exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, there's also another school committee on the 25th, which the teachers could have publicly, you know, been at and been heard at. And then ultimately on October 14th, uh, you know, Mr. Sabas, you know, kind of put the, uh, put the pressure on and said, hey, we're making this policy effect on October 25th. So I just want to make it very clear. The teachers had a, ch the teachers had a chance. Uh, the public had a chance. Anyone who had any say in what was happening here had a chance to have their opinions heard. Truly, I really do. I'm a parent of Martin. Uh, I have a big family in Martin. I appreciate what these teachers do. Um, you know, I have two children in the public schools and I have a third come. Um, you know, so again, I don't want to make this into a big thing. But again, it, it does need to be stated that what the school community did is exactly what they were supposed to do. Uh, the school community has been outstanding. You know, we have our differences and obviously I wanted to be a little quicker. Uh, you know, but again, they don't want to be asked. Uh, they are an extension of the taxpayers and they're not an extension of the Teachers Association. So I thank you guys and I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your comments. Okay, at this point, uh, in, all, in all honesty, I'm moving forward with the business of educating kids. The people who come with me are welcome to open arms when you can continue to monitor in this, in this debate. I am no longer doing this. We've exhausted this at this point. I think, quite honestly, we've, we made a decision. Uh, we made it based on what we thought was a, a good, sound, logical judgment, and that is going to be for all the end of this debate. So, we are now moving on. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. We'll be we enough to come to the channel today. Sorry, that's it. We're not asking. It's a policy. It's, it's policy, and, and when it's my discretion as chair, I think we're, we're, we're done with this debate. It's we're moving forward. That's it. So, all right. Next up, we have digital learning specialist, uh, Karen Winsler. Hi, everyone. This is going to be weird. I might have to move. Aren't you in the room? I am. So I am in the room. I'm, I'm monitoring the tech piece, right? So I am going to uh, share my screen and do a, a brief update about our new digital learning specialists that we have in the district. Um, we were very fortunate with all the kind of craziness of the last two years um, to have the support of the school committee to get uh, staff to support our teachers with technology. So let me share this. All right. So when we hired uh, the digital learning specialist, there was a true purpose to their role. Um, when I came to Norton, it was a position that I felt was critical. Um, to support our teachers with technology in the classroom. And over this past 18 months, we've never had more technology available. So one of the things um, was to be able to have staff dedicated to working with teachers. So this purpose here is just what we used to post for the position. Um, we are very fortunate that Christina Shalingo worked in this role last year. Uh, she's a veteran more an educator who moved from the middle school classroom into the digital learning specialist role. And this year we hired Ryan Robidoux, who is a veteran um, high school teacher, and they are a fantastic team. Um, neither of them could be here tonight um, due to some other circumstances, but they would love to come and speak with you towards maybe the end of the year 
um, just to give you an update on the exciting coaching that's happening in the district. So last year, oh my goodness, it was really uh, just in time to tech support. Christina and I and, and our entire team really just tried to help teachers kind of navigate the year with whether it be virtual drop-in training sessions. We, you know, did a lot of creating of websites and resources for teachers, providing this, what we call the light bite newsletter. It was really survival mode. Um, whereas this year, I think everybody as overwhelmed as some people might feel being uh, back in the school year, I think we're more in like expansion mode. We're willing to take a look at all of the tools and resources that we have and the students and maybe see how we can manage it better with the support of the digital learning specialists really true integration. One of the things we're most excited about is the pre-approved um, coaching goals that they have um, developed this year. With the principals, um, with Jen and Leo, we developed these goals for teachers. And when we call them pre-approved, all teachers are required to, um, as well as administrators, come up with goals for the year. And our digital learning specialists are really going to be supporting um, our teachers to, to meet these goals. So I wanted to just, you know, include these goals in the uh, presentation. But one of the things that we wanted to be clear about was the actual coaching cycle and what that looked like, you know, setting goals, designing a plan for the teachers, and then implementing and reflecting on that plan. So both uh, Ryan and Christina will be working with a ton of teachers this year. I want to say, um, whether it be the student learning goal about project-based learning or SEO, um, but also, if you notice here, we have 119 teachers with 65 different goals. Uh, that's pretty great. This particular um, graph right here just shows you the percentage um, of goals by school. So we're really excited that there's a, a nice kind of distribution. We have a lot of high school and middle school staff as well as JCS, so super excited. Now, they're not just working with the teachers on the goals this year. They're also going to be working with teachers who might need support, um, you know, just for like a one and done kind of activity or project. We're not forgetting those teachers uh, who didn't sign up for, for the pre-approved goals, but we wanted to make sure that um, having the opportunity to really be dedicated to this is the goal that I want to achieve this year um, with my students and getting in the classroom. They're spending a lot of time meeting with teachers, setting up face-to-face um, -face and virtual meetings, and getting you know prepared for what the year ahead looks like. These are not all happening at the same time, fortunately. Um, they're spread out throughout the course of the year, but teachers have a, a cycle that they have to meet their goals, and it's really exciting. I think we're going to see a lot of um, exciting, innovative technology use by our students and staff. Um, so moving forward, we're going to look at building on the successes that we had, um, the relationships that are made, kind of reflecting on the practices, what's working, what's not working. Obviously, we want to encourage innovation. You know, Ryan, uh, we were talking today about uh, Computer Science Week, um, kind of coding week coming up in December, and he's got some great ideas about that. Um, so we want to encourage teachers to take more risks, and I think both just Christina and Ryan's personalities and their, their teamwork is really going to shine this year to be able to support with our, um, actually all of our students and staff. So we're really excited. And that is my update. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Karen, because if it wasn't for you spearheading everything from the very beginning, our kids would not have been one-on-one -on -one, uh, when the world shut down. And I think that's that's commendable to you, especially where other districts were scrambling trying to get the technology and the, the pieces in play that we already had. So we were already well ahead of the game, and I appreciate you and your team, because without that, it wouldn't have happened. So thank you. Thank you, because with your support and obviously our entire team, we are very, very fortunate. Um, my technology team is amazing, um, but the whole administrative team really is on board with this. Um, I think looking at the digital learning specialist position this year, people are getting it, like understanding the true need for um, people to, to get that one-on-one -on -one support. And, and you all in the school committee have just 
been tremendous supporters of technology. So thanks. Mr. Stark, for saying, um, I don't want to pass it to that. It was the teacher, so we adapted so long and easily when the world shut down. So, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think it's really important, just for the public, since we have a lot of staff and folks from here tonight, that these positions can involve through real process of utilizing student choice funds to make sure that we were able to start this. And that's important because um, we didn't, you know, kind of position in the operational budget to do this in any way, shape, or form. What we did is we took direction from Karen, from our staff as well. Through you, um, year one, year two, and then um, year three, it will be in the operating budget as we did with full DK, as we've done with curriculum purchases and all of that. But that's how the, um, this came about was through the 168 students that are here bringing in about a million dollars a year. Thank you. And thank you, Karen. And the team. Thank you very much. And I will again call on what you're saying, and I'm going to hold the record when I say this, but that million plus is. That extra money it actually um, ended up covering some serious shortfalls in budgets in past years. So uh, when people think about that, I, I urge them not to think about it like this found money, which is a phrase we hear so often. Free cash. Right, like free cash, found money, uh, right. done in the background, done in the box, doesn't work that way. Uh, it, 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 it saved jobs, it saved, uh, it saved our education system. So kudos to you for ever recommending that in the first place. So thank you. Any other questions on the uh, daily learning? Oh. Okay. Um, we are going to move on to the discussion and vote. Are we, are we doing this or are we not doing this? What do you decide? This is up to you guys. So, so, yeah, so there's two there's two different ways of doing the, the resolution. Typically, the committee will vote on each of the Massachusetts uh, Association of School Committee's resolutions at their conference, which is this year held. Um, physically uh, at, a, at a place like it's been in the past, but only a certain number of folks were allowed in, and then they went to virtual. During one of the three days, there's an actual resolution vote that takes place. There's a resolution that comes up. It's explained by the uh, the maker of the, of the resolution. A discussion takes place. The vote takes place, and they do that for five or nine or ten seconds. <laughs> they pull them out to let you do. Um, this and is that nine. On Saturday. Yeah, and that's on Saturday. The other way to do it is you can not vote on it, but give a consensus to Ms. Stern, whoever is going to be your rep. And that consensus may be um, that you're voting to support her support for these, or there's one that you really want to discuss, and you're really, as a community, don't have a fan favorite on the other eight or so on and so forth. So you have options. Okay. How do you feel about this? So in reading this, there's, there's probably only one that I would. Um, Consider really having a, a, a dog in the fight, as they say, which is resolution six, the alternative to MCAS. Um, I'm not a huge fan of MCAS, I don't like it. Um, I didn't test well when I was a kid, so it's kind of personal as well. I would be in favor of resolution six um, to look at. So the resolution is finding an alternative to MCAS. I would absolutely support trying to find something other than MCAS. Um, so the resolution as voted would be that the Massachusetts Association of School Committees called upon the legislature to establish a commission to research and analyze alternative means for students to demonstrate academic achievement, which can be used to satisfy graduation requirements for individual students and accountability standards for Massachusetts. Yeah, I would be in favor of that myself. Sorry, as you know, I totally believe that that's a, a very good vote if you decide to, to support it. But this is not the first time that, yes. that we're going to set up a commission on that cast, yeah. right? We're, we've commissioned ourselves and um, nothing happens. It's, I mean, we just didn't address the pandemic. We had to take a test that instead of doing what we wanted to do with kids and what did he do? We all found out that kids didn't do well. Well, I didn't have to have my students take a test to figure that out. Right, because the fact of the matter was, we knew that we weren't having our education system doing what we normally do in our training. Um, and it's not a diagnostic, I'll challenge that forever, um, how it's a diagnostic test to figure out what students are. So I think it's important to, to, to support the support it, but I'm concerned that it's once again that kind of ring around the rosy that MASC is, is doing. Well, I, I will agree with that because this will be my fifth conference. It would be my sixth if it wasn't for them canceling during the pandemic. 
Um, so far, we have voted that uh, teachers would not have to take MTELs anymore. Still taking MTELs, as far as I know. Um, we have voted on MCAS situations before. It's still out there. So, I mean, I guess we just keep voting and sending it to the legislation. Maybe someday something will stick, but. There are bills this year with the legislature, just to let you know, there are 440 education bills. There are 440 education bills, and there's about 60 of them on MCAS. Now, what happens to them, that's a whole other thing, but there are more this year than ever before, uh, including um, a representative from Attleboro, who is one of the lead legislators on Jim Hawkins. Uh, yes, Representative Hawkins, um, who I used to work with, um, who has um, West filed legislation that's getting some flavor. So it doesn't hurt for you to vote for it. Yeah, I think, I mean, Jim can tell you, I don't know if you're taking that cast in your choice of our time. And, and mm -hmm. I apologize for the years I beat you up by the two I was going to present that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> wasting our time. Wasting our time, wasting students' time, wasting the students' time. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it probably is worth having our voice heard. That being said, I think to, to Catherine's point, Joe, your point, uh, you know, some of these resolutions look into them. There are costs still to the state. I guarantee you those will not pass. Um, so yeah. we, we may pass them, but the state is not going to pay for anything. I think that's. I that's believe the, last year there was some, uh, what about, had to do with disposable trays or something for lunches because. Okay. I, and obviously okay. that. I'll just show you what the okay. electric worker process says. So, 300 trays? Thirty billion. Oh, yeah, good luck. That's not going to happen. It's well, not, so it's just speaking personally. I mean, I've never been to a conference, but I've been here as you've attended. At some point, it's just words, right? And there needs to either be a legislature representative. Somebody steps up, or there needs to be a committee to put pressure on the legislature because, quite frankly, some of these they're going to dictate to us as the local districts. And they're going to say, do it, do it, do it, no money. And that's frankly what I'm quite tired of, right? And, and that's what I'm tired of, too. Exactly. Like, they say, oh, yeah, that's a great idea, and then you pay for it. Yeah, that's that's what I'm tired of. And, I mean, a lot of these, again, I, I don't have kids at recess age. Um, you know, I'll, I'll reserve my opinion on, on the Native American mascots. Um, but I mean, this is just words. Like, it's frustrating as a local board that we take direction from people that just like to talk <laughs> and that's the problem i always have with these resolutions i think one year we went we went an hour or two on a meeting because it was a really good resolution and here we are again well i'll tell you this meeting so it's nine resolutions if anybody wants to see it and can make copies put it at each school or whatever um this, this meeting will, with from my experience, with nine resolutions, it'll be at least two and a half hours, if not three. Which is ridiculous. Really it's part of the packet. Okay. Right. So how do we want to proceed on? We can we can vote on. Sorry. We can uh, we can vote on it. We can. I think in the past we actually individually would send Kathleen our kind of um, right. thoughts. Right. And but what I'm asking is, do we want to send a message to him? Say we reserve we reserve our vote because we don't believe that this is an effective method. Do we want to let's say three hours out of my Saturday? Right. <laughs> well, I, I I just don't see a huge win for it. I mean, yeah, good ideas on paper, but it's frankly not worth the paper it's written on. I think I'm going to be honest with you, because I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, and I so we've been doing this collectively for about a dozen years. I don't think we've ever seen a resolution come out of this conference and it's been, been an effort. Right, and, and I've, I've had my first yeah, I mean, I see it fast as well. So, um, well, I, I was a school committee member from 1998 to 2004. I'm still waiting for my resolutions to pass. So, I don't know. I mean, it, it much like Yamcast itself, are we just wasting time? Mm -hmm. I, I think you'd be better off, Mr. Chairman, um, on issues that are key to the one public schools and the one community to this five member school committee to take topics up that are they're called resolutions and go on a different route, which would be to write directly to the president of the association and on behalf of the Norton Public Schools, we really think that this is the key issue that needs to be addressed, or and so on and so forth. And, and then send it to your legislature, send it to the governor, and do what you did the last letter that you put out. So, and I would say other than the other one is, uh, sorry, the yeah, MCAS one, the other one is, uh, you know, number nine, I'm not a huge fan of uh, dictating uh, 
dictate speech like that. And I, I think that gets us into a really tricky situation in general. Um, there's, there's, I went through them just for the sake of, you know, as I do every year. There, there were two that stick out for me. Um, the alternative to MCAS, as you know, is always been there. The other one that I think is important because we can create the IDEA Full Funding Act, which is to. to uh, I'm sorry, which number is that? Number three, issue number three. Um, and that act is very dear to me, as you know, because of the idea of how special education is funded. Um, and we're very big supporters of the No, we may not. However, uh, so that you know, the reason why this is a maybe one that could have something is there is a bill right now. Um, through the special education state packet, which the superintendent association and the uh, the MTA and the uh, um, American Federation of Teachers and 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 to take the extra CARES money, which is about two hundred and seventy million dollars, instead of re potentially returning it to the feds or using it somewhere else, it was geared towards education. It should go. It should be going out for those cases that are significant costs to district the two fifty three hundred thousand dollar basis. There's also a bill filed by Representative Powell, who represents me, who represents uh, parts of Norton, that any any student that out of district classes over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of the reimbursement to the district, including transportation, would be at ninety percent instead of the current seventy to seventy five percent. So there is some flow here and that could potentially with a resolution that's passed get something. Because there's already information there. But again, you could take that and write to your representatives and write to your folks and say, we need your vote on this. And then hold them to that because we really don't know how our state senators and representatives vote. And that's not a knock on them. I'm not trying to you know, attack them for that. I'm just saying, if we don't tell them on your behalf, the five of you as a vote, if you don't tell them how you think they should act on a piece of legislation, then more than likely um, it, it's not seen in the same way. Okay, right. so, uh, I'm assuming that this is going to be treated the same way that the conference is where if, if they don't have enough room for everybody, you can't you can't have a school committee vote a Massachusetts without a representative from each one of the school committees. So I'm assuming that this is going to be virtual as well. So I don't mind throwing it in here, but doing my laundry and everything else and listening and voting. Well, it sounds like we're going to be yourself in it. Now. Okay, I'll take that. It, it sounds like we're going to go a different direction. <laughs> and, 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 honestly, I, I think I think we're. Again, we're spinning our wheels. Um, we're not really getting anywhere with this, and, and I don't know why we continue to do it. Um, you know, so so yeah, I think I think maybe thinking about what's near and dear to the north itself. That's that's really in the end. That's our job. You know, my, my job is to worry about um, over the yeah, yeah. I mean, we're in kind of Boston, the city of Boston. I, I, I don't care about that, but I, I, that's not my job. My job's not to care about so, so we we can do some cutting and pasting. We'll probably send it to the five of you. Words method and then send it to the officials that we think it should be sent. Okay, I think that's a better route. So we're looking at, um, like I said, uh, whatever ones you want, you can email me and I can just put letters together on your behalf and you can work smith and anybody. You know what, Joe? I mean, I think there's, there's a couple of areas we care about. I don't even get this set up. Let's, let's move on. This is what we care about. Okay. I, I think that should be maybe a standard practice for us is to whatever. Twice a year. Look at the education yeah. bills that are introduced. Send, send stuff to our legislators and say, hey, here's here's what we care about. Here's what here's how you better vote if you want to vote. And quite honestly, too, I mean, at these conferences, there's 150, 200 people in the room. There's never been a close vote. I don't think there's ever been a standing vote. It's, I mean, it's short. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other discussion on this? No. Sorry, we have to vote on it because you voted me in last time? Or? Who wants to vote you out? <laughs> yeah, no, I would have done You got a no show down the screen. We're going to you now. Okay, um, so where's the new map? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that was the final uh, topic on our agenda. Other than the other business. It's just one. I, I just want to, since I have the opportunity um, that this goes out uh, in its video, I um, just want to just make sure everybody understands the process for the closing of school uh, because I, I think folks. Um, at times, don't know what goes into it. Um, unfortunately, this particular one, and I do apologize to both families and staff, it was a late call, but it's a late call based on the information and how it's coming in. But typically, um, and I'll go out and let it tomorrow from the weekly um, newsletter that I send out. It, it's, it's, it's a step where, you know, start at 4.15 in the morning, unless I'm canceling the night before. Those are my favorites for the record for everybody. Um, 
But um, we start at 4 15 in the morning. We get phone calls to the local officials. Wade and I have discussions. Superintendent group in the area, we all have discussions because we all have the same night problems, especially those of us in the suburban district, the suburban districts. Um, and then we have the National Weather Service information from the town of Norton, as you know, it resides here. So that's a critical one. And we have a gentleman that we actually speak to who works for them, who's actually a resident of one of the communities in the area, not only one resident, that gives us some real deep insight, which is great. We get that to another superintendent. Um, and then we, we, make, we make the decision. So, you know, as a, there's a sign in my office that basically has a big helmet, uh, hammer hitting me on this side of the head that says, you know, day off, and the other side says, you know, go to school. So it's 50 50 on every vote. But uh, we do take it seriously. Um, I know that there are still some families that are out um, this week. Um, we are open for tomorrow, as far as we know. Um, we had a good day today. We did have some students out. I heard uh, Will and have already informed staff about having some flexibility with the students that have been out, especially certain parts of town. Um, when I came into this meeting, we were, we were finally under 2,000. Um, so that's that we're moving in the right direction. Uh, but I just want folks to kind of know that so that it's, it's, it is a process. It, it's a, the most difficult decision that I make in terms of the day to day operations um, is the weather. And to be quite honest, taking a day, snow day, if you will, an emergency day in October is never fun. This is the second year in a row we've had to do that. Um, and I can't think of the last 13 years, so the prior 11 years. A superintendent having to make that call in October, except maybe a boiler at a school or something like that. So, um, so right now we're on the 16th of June. We have a Friday left, and um, then we go into the fall. Thank you. Um, just, just on the record, I, I 100% agree with yesterday's call. Um, I myself was not able to get out of the street. Right. Going left was was blocked. It was two or three streets down. Going right was 100% blocked. So I mean. It, it's you know we've had this discussion when it comes to the land care and the forecast that's a little different this is people couldn't get to school you know employees staff everybody you know it was a you know bottleneck not um, to mention that if somebody has damage to their house we don't absolutely. expect you to it's the last thing on your mind is you know and i know like my kids were, were antsy last night we didn't go today and we didn't go today i was like Charge your Chromebooks with the generator and you go to school. <laughs> so, um, or go to Time Holly. Open yeah. that up. <laughs> I think it's important to for people to know. I mean, that, my child's in this district, so she she knows ahead of time, I guess. But um, it is a parental decision still. Every decision on the set, unless it's something illegal, the fact is, if you, if you think you know what's not safe, you don't want to send your child to school. It's not an excused absence, but. We always make that work within the system because you know there was a situation on the road where you felt to tell that somebody could drive that way. Parents, when you take kids out for vacation, if you really think it's unsafe, you can make that decision as well. Just out of curiosity, is there a outage number that you look at to say, yeah, we're not having? I mean, I know we had two schools without power, so obviously they weren't on. Well, but is yes. there a number in town? National Grid Average Map is eight hundred four six five. One, two, one, two. Tell Thank you, Peter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the contact, um, the number that I always um, look at in terms of just the weather is when is the storm hitting during the evening into the morning, into the, everything's around the commute hour. <laughs> Almost everything. So it's not here. necessarily the amount of people that don't have power no. that is not. No. I mean, we take that into consideration, but, um, you know, because we, we are known as a community that gets a lot of power out. Right. Um, so, and I can tell you, my hometown was uh, almost 100 percent, and just got back this afternoon. So I've been on the generator since that phone call, uh, that wake up at 4:15. Uh, so um, there isn't a set number, but it's like anything else. We look at the data to say, okay, if we think. And I'll give you an example. One of the key decisions about yesterday was was outage but the other real key decision was how dark it was going to be out for a bus pickup that was concerning um and that still happened today in certain areas i know that but um that was the big one and then i mean most of the power outages in town actually happened after eight in the morning um that's when we started to see all parts of town going out the lgn side coming this way the yell went out i sent the staff home at 11 o'clock yesterday because we went out at 10 don't get that power till later so <laughs> So that's the process, just to let everybody know. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll say, 
historically has not been shared. And we've had these types of things. You and I have been in contact very late at night, yeah. very early in the morning. I got not so much nowadays, but it's an advice that's very, very much important. Yeah. And you and I are very in contact. So, <laughs> and not that I, I don't make the decisions, and obviously, your decisions. I, feel like I do tell my kids they're my decision, but I work in school, right? <laughs> and then when you say this, when the school is out, I'm like, well, that's Joe's decision. You make it. <laughs> I, can, I can tell by the way you did run to violence today because you're still standing. <laughs> I, I do have to say, I did take one credit one time when we had no school after a Super Bowl. I looked at my kids and said, you're welcome. <laughs> that was one, one of the easiest <laughs> calls I've yeah. ever had. <laughs> if the governor says it's a bad day, the Patriots are on and you're getting 12 inches, I can call it by four. <laughs> you, do, you do put the, you put a lot of effort into it, and it was appreciated. I know it's, it's not yesterday, well, yesterday, well, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday was, was like, Awful about making yeah. that decision, and then yeah. it was Wade who actually said, He goes, Boy, we got lucky on that one. And I said, Yeah, because we were thinking we were coming in yesterday. Check out the meeting at Smith, and so far, 1,006 customers without power in the north. All right, do we have any other business before us? So, I would just make a motion to adjourn the uh, uh sorry, before we do that, um, let me see how it's next. Meeting is going to be Thursday, November 18th, right back here at the middle school library. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Okay. Mm -hmm. Second? Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of Mrs. Yao? Yes. Mrs. Stark? Yes. Mr. Shee? Yes. And Mr. Sebastian? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.